Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this newly revised AMD motherboard from MSI. This is the 990FXA GD65 V2. Now MSI has released a second revision of this motherboard because AMD has released a second revision of their FX series processors. So uh, this is just an empty box for one of them, but in case you're wondering, the code name for these processors is Vichera. And in order to determine whether you're getting a first generation uh, FX processor or second generation, look at the second digit of the uh, actual SKU for the CPU. So for example, this is an 8350. The first gen version of this would have been an 8150. Um, so bearing that in mind, if you are purchasing a new 990FX motherboard and you're purchasing a Vachera CPU and you want to make sure that they work together, well, go for the V2 of this particular motherboard or uh, a lot of the 990FX motherboards that are released. Uh, for instance, this one is guaranteed to ship with at least BIOS version 19.7 which will give you the share support and actually MSI has updated already and they're up to 19.9 so you can download and install that updated BIOS version if you want to make sure you get the maximum functionality and uh, compatibility for this particular motherboard. But let's go over some of the specs. Uh, this is a military class motherboard uh, which means you have high quality components such as the icy chokes which sounds like a terrible way to die but MSI is saying that uh, they will run 20 degrees Celsius lower than standard chokes also high C caps solid capacitors on the board high quality components for longer life span le longer lifespan to run cooler and to make sure you can uh, get your maximum overclocks some of the compatibilities and capabilities of this motherboard you get Nvidia SLI support as well as AMD Crossfire X support if you want to go with multi GPU configurations it's compatible with Windows 7 it will also be compatible with Windows 8 of course supports unlocked FX second gen Vachera processors you got the 9 series chipset the 990FX which is the top end chipset from the 9 series of chipsets from AMD you also get some other features from MSI such as the 1 second overclocking with the OC Genie 2 push a button on the board and it overclocks your processor automatically. You also get some high end, uh, higher end connectivity such as USB 3.0 and lots of SATA 6 gigabits per second ports. Let me just slip around to the back really quick so you guys can take a look. A lot of the same material that was already discussed on the front and next up we'll go forward with an unboxing. Inside the box, first off, we have some accessories. You get, of course, an input-output shield that you should install in your case before you install the motherboard. That's got all your color-coded uh, inputs and outputs labeled there, so you can tell more easily which one is which. Here's a USB 2.0 PCI bracket, so you can add a couple more USB 2.0 ports to the back of your case and plug that into one of the headers on the motherboard. We also have a drivers and utilities disk. There are updated versions of all of these drivers and the utilities most likely as well available on the MSI website. So download them from there rather than using that drivers and utilities disks. Although this is really handy if you don't have immediate support for the included network interface card to at least get your network connected before you download the, the updated drivers. But I digress. Okay, here's the HDD backup user's guide for one of the uh, applications that's included. You get a black and white multilingual installation guide here. So this is a pretty basic tutorial just kind of walking you through basic steps for installing different components into your computer. Uh, you could also reference our how to build a computer video tutorial full guide on Newegg TV on our YouTube channel in the tutorial section. Here's your main motherboard manual for the 990FX AGD65. Definitely keep this on hand while you're doing your build. It will sort of walk you through, for instance, all the in included components and important stuff like which DIMM slots to plug your memory into. Apart from that, final accessories over here. We have the M connectors from MSI, so if you have little individual leads coming off from uh, inputs and outputs such as your front panels or USB ports, you can plug them into these blocks and that makes it a bit easier to connect those to the motherboard. You also get a total of four white serial ATA cables. Uh, two of them have straight plugs on both ends and two of them have uh, one straight plug and one 90 degree angled plug. They're all of course SATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second compatible with little clasps on the end. And then you also get a couple power adapters here that will allow you to take a Molex plug, convert it to a serial, serial ATA plug. And uh, even if you don't use this in your build, I love to have those on hand because it gives you a lot more flexibility with power supplies. Next up, let's take a look at the board. As you can see, the motherboard color scheme is primarily black with some blue on some of the connectors, also some gray. And the PCB itself is a sort of semi-gloss brown color. 
So there's a look at the back so you guys can get a better look at the color of the PCB. Also, of course, you have the uh, retention plate there on the back for the AMD uh, CPU cooling solution mount. Also, you have Phillips head spring-loaded screws for the heat sinks on the board so you can more easily remove those if it becomes necessary in the future. Looking back here at the front of the board, I want to quickly point out the fan headers. There's a total of five, including the CPU fan. So CPU fan connector is right up here at the top. That's a four-pin PWM connector. The rest are three-pin connectors, so you have one uh, nestled in right there between the, uh, the power delivery and the um, chipset. <laughs> Pardon me. Also, you have one over here on the right side, you have one here on the bottom right, and then you have one here on the left side next to the PCI slots. Next up, we're going to go over the detailed look at the board and all of the connectors, or at least as many of them as I can possibly point out to you guys. We'll start down here in the bottom right. So you have these two pinouts, and those are your front panel connectors. You can use those with the included M connectors. You also have a clear CMOS jumper right there. I have no idea what this header is, the JSP1I. It's not mentioned in the manual at all. I, I wanted to point it out that I tried to figure out what it is. If anyone knows, you can point it out in the comments. You have a trusted platform module header right there. Next to that, you have a couple USB 2.0 front panel connectors or rear panel. You can use those with that included PCI slot uh, converter. Also, on the left here, you have a COM header. You have a uh, SPDIF as well as a CD connector there for the audio card. And then uh, finally on the left here, you have your front panel audio connectors so you can connect your front panel microphone and headphone. The audio on the board, since I'm down here by some of the audio componentry, actually the chip for it is located right there with the Realtek ALC 892 audio, uh, eight channel audio with jack sensing built in. So pretty nice uh, onboard audio solution. Next up, we'll talk about the PCI slots. And uh, you do have quite a few here, and, if, and you have a few different options for configuration. They actually have a legacy PCI slot down here at the bottom. So if you have an older card that you're still using that has, it needs PCI, then you will be all set with that port. The blue connectors here are full-length X16 PCI Express connectors. Then you have one, two, three, four X1 PCI Express connectors for add-on cards. Now, if you want to go with a two-way Crossfire X or SLI solution that is supported, you have triple slot spacing here between these two ports, so you can fit in the fatter cards that are available these days with the beefier cooling solutions. And these will both uh, these will run at uh, X16 and X8, respectively, if you're using both of them. Of course, both of them full length, so they can fit the full length PCI Express cards. Now, uh, one other feature that you have right up here is actually a six-pin power connector, so you can plug that in. That will provide some extra juice to the PCI slots, and that's really only necessary if you're going to be going with a uh, two-way Crossfire X or SLI solution. Moving on over to the right side here, you have a aluminum gray heat sink, and that's right on the uh, SB950, which is the South Bridge uh, chipset, and that's going to control quite a few different components down in this area, as well as some I.O., so we have some serial ATA connectors right there. Total of six of them, they're all the same color because they're all the same speed and they're all controlled by that SB950 chipset. They're SATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit, gigabit per second ports, so really nice to have lots of that I.O. high-speed bandwidth available, um, especially if you're going to be going with multiple SSDs or faster drives that you're going to connect. Above that, we have a 24-pin main motherboard power connector. And then uh, next to that, we have your DDR3 slots. So this is uh, dual-channel memory support. You can have up to four DIMMs, up to eight gigs per DIMM, so up to 32 gigs total of DDR3 memory. Uh, the official speeds supported by the uh, memory controller is 1333, although this board does also support overclock speeds up to the range of 2133. And remember, you should install your DIMMs in sets of two to take advantage of that dual channel support. And according to the manual, you want to populate these two black DIMM slots first, and then if you go with four, you can populate all four, of course. Now, right above the DDR3 slots up here, you have some LED indicators. Those are one through eight there, and those are actually CPU power phase indicators, so you can actually determine based on the load on your CPU just by looking at those LEDs which of the CPU power phase phases are active. And speaking of the CPU power phases, they're located right beneath this heat sink right here. You can see the chokes for them. There's a total of 10 there. Eight of them are providing uh, power to the CPU, and then two more providing power to the 990FX chipset, which is right there. Now the AM3 Plus socket is right here in the middle, and that's where you install your AMD 
FX series processor. And then of course you have the standard AMD mounting solution there that's been around for quite some time. So it uh, features support and compatibility with a lot of aftermarket cooling solutions with this included bracket. Uh, now you have some uh, heat sinks here again, the military class labeled one right here, and that's uh, direct, making direct contact uh, with the VRMs uh, that are located directly beneath it. And then again, you have an MSI uh, labeled gray heat sink, and that's over the 990FX chipset. Finally up here in the upper left, just next to the uh, military class labeling, you have your 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector, and you will definitely want to connect that to the 8-pin supplement supplemental CPU power from your power supply. We'll finish off here with inputs and outputs at the back. So you have a combo PS2 port right there for a mouse or a keyboard. You also have lots of USB 2.0, two, four, six, eight USB 2.0 ports in total for extra IO on the back. You have a clear CMOS button right there that you can access externally without getting into your case. You have a couple uh, audio outputs right here. So you have a Toslink optical audio out. You also have a coax uh, audio output. You have a uh, NIC car, I'm sorry, a, well, this is a Ethernet jack that connects to the NIC. Uh, the network interface card included here is a Realtek RTL8111E. It's a gigabit network interface card. Lastly, you have a couple USB 3.0 ports, and those are controlled by an NEC D72200. Uh, add-on USB 3.0 uh, controller chip on the board. Then finally you have your analog audio connectors for your Realtek audio codec. And that's going to wrap it up for this video guys. Once again this has been the MSI 990 FXA GD65 V2 with support for second generation FX processors from AMD codenamed Vachera featuring the AM3 Plus socket the uh, 990FX Northbridge and the 950SB Southbridge. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.